Hey everyone, Eric with Rockin' HTV session 95. Tonight we start lesson three of our Case 2090 build. We started out with an Ertl, old Ertl casting and then incorporated an 1170 case demonstrator for the front axle and um, had to do a little body work and some repaint and here we go. So welcome, welcome to everybody. We'll let the house get full up. We have Chris watching from New Zealand. Good to see you. Australia, New Zealand. Uh, Kent from Canada, we have a good international crowd this evening so far. Nathan right here. Oh, let me see. Nathan's in Oklahoma. Good to see you. Tyler's here. Good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Eric, good to see you. Uh, ah, good crowd this evening. And right after I introduce the show, get it going, I will reveal what kind of a layout I'm building back behind me. What I've effectively done is started a whole bunch of projects that will take me forever to build. <laughs> I've got six silage trucks over here that need decals and final assembly I haven't done. Um, mostly, and then I've got, uh, I've got a Freightliner Classic I'm doing for a guy. Um, Kent finished spraying last night, good, to de good deal. Glad you're all caught up and ready to do other things. Um, let's see, so I got a Freightliner Classic I'm doing for a guy and I got a Lone Star and, um, I got to do a four-door Freightliner for a guy in Texas. So, uh, yeah, I've effectively just covered myself up with, with plenty of jobs. Oh, well. And then I had this in, too. I'm crazy. I guess so. All right. Anyways, Mark's here. David's here. Hello, everyone. Welcome to you guys. Um, we got a couple more minutes. Uh, tomorrow's the 4th of July. I hope everyone has a safe and fun holiday. Those of you that get to take the day off, I hope you get to enjoy, rest, and relax. I'm gonna spend, I'm gonna kick off my day in the swimming pool at 6 a.m., get my laps in. Uh, Sunday, I'm doing an Olympic triathlon, so uh, get my last big swim in before, uh, before competition day, woohoo. So, and if you notice, I'm kinda hot. I got done mowing the grass a bit ago, and holy hell, it's cozy in Dodge City, that's all I'm gonna say. Dylan's here, good to see you. All right, good crowd tonight. Does anybody have big, who's, who's working tomorrow? Who has to work? Put in the comments, I do or yes, and maybe no. And if you're not working, what are you gonna do? You gonna barbecue, try and blow things up or kick your feet up at the lake? What you doing? We have uh, two parties to go to, one for lunch and then another one in the evening. And then, like I said, tomorrow morning I'm going to swim, and then I'm going to come out here to the lab while it's cool. And uh, probably get to working on it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I got a couple of odds. Oh, I need to get this four-door done here. Tyler says he's got to work. Hopefully not the whole day. I got two of these. So I bought these for the cabs. And uh, take them apart, strip them, cut them down. Marry them back together. Little body work should take a couple hours. Um, well, yeah, it'll take a couple hours. I mean, not all at once. What it's going to happen is uh, you have to do all the body work, use your JB quick, and then put it back together. Once that's dry, then you can do the rest of it. But anyhow, so yeah, that's what's going on for me tomorrow. I'm not going to push too hard. I'll take the day off. Goof off a little bit. Hi, Dylan. How are you? Good good to see you. Thanks for coming in. All right. Um, John says, nothing planned. Working. All right. On his toy collection. Excellent. And his Freightliner Classics. Good. His XLs. Good deal. Yeah, those are coming. You've done quite a few of those now. Those look good. And by the way, John, I don't have as many as I thought I did. I think I've only got... Um, uh, well, I'm going to keep one or two for myself, so I may only have two more left. But that's okay. You can have the last two if I have to. i got to look in my box again. And we got Ward in the house. All right. Kyler, hey, good to see you from Nebraska. Well done. But you're getting ready to cut some weed up there. All right, guys, it is 8.30, so we're going to kick this party off. 
Hey everyone, it is Eric with Rockin' HTV Session 95. Tonight we start our Lesson 3 of the Case 2090 build. And also, I'm going to introduce, I'm going to reveal what kind of a layout I'm building right after I say hello to everybody. So, hello. Let's take a little walk. Alright, here we go guys. You around. Things are kind of a mess here. Oh, my bling. Love that sign. All right, guys, for those of you that guessed, I'm building a feedlot with some sort of bunker. You're right. Um, what I'm doing is I'm making a high moisture corn display. This is something I've really wanted to do um, just because I think it's pretty awesome. If you go to my YouTube channel, rockinhtv.com, um, you can see... Uh, you can see a video of high moisture corn processing out of Ford County Feeders. This is what we're doing. And yes, Michael, it's 95 in here. That and I got done mowing the grass, so I'm kind of, it's pretty cozy. So this is uh, basically a rough draft of what I'm going to do. So at Ford County Feeders, there's a lot of texture here. So, because it's really hilly at that, well, not really hilly. That's kind of a bad statement. It, there's hills there. And everything is cut into the hills. All right. So right here is you have a highway entrance. And the highway entrance leads right into this area where the pits are concerned. But what, comes, but what, what really happens is all the uh, grain trucks and cattle trucks come up here to this area. And it, and it goes uphill. Okay. So this will all be cut out and textured. It comes out into this big yard over here. Where... Uh, the semis kind of congregate and feed trucks come and go and whatnot. And then you have the scale house here and the scale right there. And then this is employee parking right here. And then there's livestock pens. These are all feed bunks and livestock pens behind the scale house and next to it. And then there's alleys through here that go to where the cow... And I don't have any cattle trailers, so I just use what I have. So um, there's actually kind of a hill there's probably 15 feet of drop from this to where, from, the, from this spot to this spot. And there's kind of a pretty dramatic slope right here. So you go up this hill into the yard, or you can kind of, so you're, you're going uphill over here, and then you can kind of come into this flat basin, and then the semis, the cattle pots turn around in here and then unload and load cattle. And this is, Actually, a 52,000 head yard, so this is one entry point. There's another one uh, back in the yard in another spot. Okay, so um, immediately there's this great, this is a 600,000 bushel pit full of high moisture corn. Um, and the way they offload these, so the concrete comes clear, there's an apron out here, and then the concrete bunkers, it actually comes up to a slope. So it, so it slopes down like this inside the bunker, and then it flattens out and it goes for quite a ways, and then the ball, walls are vertical on both sides. But they have this little strip here, um, and then there's gravity-fed pit here. Um, they can actually unload two semis at a time. So what would happen is you would unload your front hopper here, the semi pulls forward, and then this is a probably a 15-foot drop with a concrete wall right here. So from the top here down to the bottom is 15 foot or so. So they pull up to this, they stop short, and then they'll unload the back pit, or back hopper, and then this one, you'd unload here and then pull forward and unload another one. And then, this guy's got to back up, and then he turns down another hill, and then they go right up to the scale house. So there's this big... There's going to be a lot of texture right in here too, so I may end up pushing this pit short uh, over there. So what they normally do then is all the corn comes in here, and if you watch the video, um, you'll see what I mean. You'll, you'll understand everything when you watch the video, if you do. So there's this spot here. Um, loaders are moving in here, and then there will be a big mill right here feeding into this. And then those guys just make circles all day long, packing high moisture corn. And then there's a pit here, an earth wall here, earth wall here, another pit, and an earth wall. And I think these two are, what, 400,000 bushels each? 
And then there's two of these actually that are 600,000 bushels a piece. So it's pretty freaking cool to watch. Just, it's just amazing. So I think I had two guys that got close to, uh, I think Nathan Durbin actually, and uh, I forget whom, whom else guessed that this was gonna be some sort of feedlot display. And that's what I'm going for. Actually, this right here, this area right here, and then over here, there's gonna be a bucket load of semis parked over there, getting ready to come and go. Because when high moisture corn is big, when they're going uh, full bore, they will process, they'll have like 250 trucks a day coming through. And then their mills, they're insane. The whole process is insane. It's amazing how much corn those guys can process in a day. But normally they'll take in 2.1 to 2.2 million bushels. And then it all goes through roller mills. One's five, one's four. And the one I'm putting on is going to be seven. So it's going to be pretty freaking cool. Or at least I'm excited about it. So I'll get the... I'll, I'm going to go back to the comments in the No Secrets Lab and I'll find out who exactly spoke about the uh, um, display and then I'll get you your prizes, okay? And I got more prizes for a second good guess. So there we go. All right. We have blown enough time talking about the display, so here we go. What we're working on is the 2090. We started out with the 2590 Ertl casting and we put the 1170 Demo 1170 case demonstrator front axle on it so it would turn and swivel and then uh, tonight we're going to put in cab glass because last week uh, we assembled the rear I don't have the axle glued on but we did assemble it and got some paint on everything um, and that's kind of where we're at right now so cab glass tonight and some partial assembly okay uh, Brent yes the uh, roller mill is uh, in the second round of edits, and um, I don't know when it'll be public. I'm actually teaming up with uh, Mock Farms on the project, so he and I are working on that. He's doing most of the work. I just got the design and pictures and dimensions and all this other stuff. He's doing the rest of the work, so I owe him money. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's where we're at tonight. We may even do some assembly. We're going to work on it. Here we go. Okay guys, rather than bore you to death with me cutting out pieces of plastic, I went ahead and worked ahead while you guys were watching just a little bit ago, and I did go ahead and put some glass in this thing right here. What I'm using for cab glass here is just a DCP semi-truck clamshell. Uh, this was actually a, a grain trailer that I had, and, or I had a bunch of grain trailers, a couple of them, just for stock, and then uh, so I cut a piece of plastic out of here, which is this, and then I cut it down until it fit. There's your front windshield. You can see I didn't quite get it perfect over here on the side, but for government work, that's pretty darn good. And then you can see I've got the side cam glass here and here. And so what I'm gonna do while you're watching here is I've already got the other pieces cut, because I didn't really figure you guys would wanna watch me fumble cutting plastic. Um, at least I wouldn't wanna watch it, so. If I don't want to watch it, I know others don't want to either. Um, but what we will do is we're going to glue in this piece of plastic and this piece of plastic. Now, you could, if you are so interested, you could go ahead and put in the plastic over here on both sides. I chose not to. It's not important to me. It's just not a detail I'm interested in pursuing. Um, so I've chosen not to do that. But, I mean, just know that you can, you're just going to have to spend a little time doing it, that's all. But it's very doable. Um, probably not going to be the easiest thing in the world considering, you know, there's nothing to glue to and um, this thing has to fit around your body. But, nevertheless, you can get it done. Alright, so here we go. And one other thing. Now, a guy that just signed on, Matt, a uh, friend of Rock and H, he asked, what would it take or or you know why not move this front axle forward and I agree with him if you look at a real 2090 versus what we're doing here the real 2090 in my opinion this axle sets probably 12 18 inches forward or so I'm gonna guess um, you know I think if I were to do this again I would sacrifice uh, I would probably move this 
this axle forward and just glue the axle like cut this housing out right here just grind this off flush and then take this and just slide it forward on the on the casting and then that would move that axle forward I think it actually look a little better and I think if I do another one which I'll maybe do someday because um, this does kind of annoy me having the axle back so far like on a real 2590 um, I do appreciate having the axle forward just a bit more but just know that you guys could do that if you wanted to all right so we're gonna set that off to the side here we go um, what I did to keep glue from going all over the place and uh, I just put a little bit of my super glue on this oh Fritz man it must be that warm it all right hang on hang on I just used this stuff And it got a little cozy on me and closed up. All right. Come on, there we go. So all I'm doing here is I'm just taking a very little bit of glue here up there at the top. It's just a lot easier to control with on this stick. And you don't need a lot because it's just a thin piece of plastic. So you don't need much. I don't even know if I got any on that bottom piece. Oh, and then I think I'm going to... Just a little dab right there in there. Come on, baby. There we go. Just a bit, and then I'm going to take my stick in here, and we're just going to cover that up. Smear it out there. Okay. And then I've already got a piece of plastic that I cut earlier, and I even laid it out right so it goes in. So you can see here's, here's, I don't know, can you see that? Oh, okay, right there it is. Now you can see, I mean, I cut it at a couple of angles to fit the inside of the, the cab. So here we go. And we're going to press that down in place just like so. And that's it. We're going to do the same thing for the bottom piece. And I'm going to get rid of some of that glue. I don't want quite that much on there. There. Okay. Okay. And then here's this piece. See how I cut that out? Lots of angles. You could probably cut it all out in one piece if you were if you were interested, you could do that. And I actually thought about it and then I thought, nah, I'm not doing that. Okay. So this piece is in, and I don't like the way, okay, I'm press that down just a bit more. Make sure it's gorgeous, and it is mostly gorgeous. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. Yeah, and I will glue that wheel on when I'm ready to. I'm just not quite ready to. Okay. Now what we're going to do is um, we're going to start putting some plastic together. I think we can go ahead and do this. And I'm actually, this is all one piece. Actually, I, this is broke. These are your interior pieces for your cab. Okay. Okay, just like so. So what I'm actually going to do on this thing, I'm going to take this piece off because I think I'm going to be able to handle it better without it being on. Okay. So this is your grill for the front of your tractor. Okay. And then we're just going to set this off to the side and let that glue chillax in there. That's going to be great. Here we go. Okay, we need to 
Actually, I'm going to put this on my rag because I don't want to muck up any paint. That's just not the way I think it should be, is it? Looks like it should go back in there. Let's get a screwdriver on this project. Here we go, flathead. I guess that's right. Sure doesn't look right from the back. Oh well. Let's see how that's gonna. Okay. Well, it's gonna set. I guess that's what we want. All right. Then I'm going to take Okay. I think I'm going to take this piece off too. Now, if you remember us starting this, I basically except for putting that cab glass in and painting this thing, doing a little sanding, you're seeing me learn how to do this. Normally what I'll do before I do a show like this is I go in and I kind of like, well, how do we do this? Because sometimes I just don't know. And I'll figure it out before you guys come on. And I didn't do that on this. I just thought, nope, we're just gonna we're just gonna be transparent and you guys are gonna see me figure it out. Okay, we also have a steering wheel here. So we're going to put that on quick, get that out of the road. Oof, maybe a little bit too much glue there. Good grief. Yeah. Okay. Now, you know, one other thing you could do, guys. Um, I probably should do this just so you guys can see how it would turn out. But what you could do is come in with a black paint pen, and actually I probably wouldn't even use a paint pen. I'd probably use paint on a, this is, I'm something by these at Hobby Lobby. They're just itty bitty paint brushes, but I'd dab that in black paint. You come in here and touch your foot pedals, your right and left brake and your clutch. You could do that, you know, and I probably, I, you know, I should just do that. What the heck? All right. I'll just do it. Okay. So what I did here is I just dabbed my black paint pen on a piece of plastic. I do this kind of regularly. This is not an uncommon thing for me, especially on detail work like this. So I dab my black paint pen on a piece of plastic. And here I'm going to take my little paintbrush. I'm going to come in here as steady as I can. I'm kind of shaky tonight because uh, it seems like whenever I run my weed eater, I just get real shaky after that. That's weird. So what I'm doing here is just put a little detail on my clutch and my left brake. You could do this to the, uh, I think on these 20 series. Actually, the stuff around the steering was black as well. Okay. So there we go. Not pretty, but we have just a little spot of detail on the foot pedals on the interior. Okay. Okay, so there's your fuel tank. And I think just because we can, we're going to pull that back out and glue these together just now. So... That's not a problem, because I can see it being a problem. Okay, yeah, let's just do this. Yeah. Watch this, I'll go through this trouble and then it won't work. Where's my insta set in my third arm? Okay. Okay, we're gonna do 
that and that. There we go. Okay, give this a few seconds here. We are at 850, so that's, we're cooking along, all right. Okay, so now our interior, I think, is ready to go. All right. Kind of curious, do the rest of your communities, wherever you live, do people light off their fireworks several days in advance of the actual holiday? I know in Dodge, the... Oh, forget it. That's dumb. Um, the city allows people to shoot them off. Um, Dad, come Three days in advance. If you can believe that. So things have been kind of noisy here for a couple of days now. Okay. That's kind of working, isn't it? See, this is the tedious part of these lessons when you haven't done it before. <laughs> Crapple. Hell, I glued that in the wrong spot anyway, didn't I? Huh, go figure. All right, well, okay. Let's see if we can get that to move right there. Does that look about right? Can we move that without it getting weird? No, no. Stay there, you junk. Heck. All right, someone's going to get a little peeved here pretty quick. Alright, whoop, sorry guys, whoa, now that's up. Working a little too close to my camera. Okay, there we go. Okay, oh, crabble. Shoot. Gosh dang it. There, stop. Whoops. That was a big one there. Come on, you better stay glued, you jerk. All right. That should be pretty close. Oh, wow, look at that. And my steering wheel come off. Okay, put the steering wheel on last. Don't do it right way. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work. And then we'll insta set your silly butt on. Okay. <laughs> talking to your press yeah yeah my finest moment indeed okay let's do a little dry fit here see what we got oh you nasty thing stay there something tells me I got something wrong on this I got something not quite right or maybe I do maybe we'll do it this way jerk wheel okay there we go all right okay something's not quite perfect here what do we got wrong okay I guess that's wrong okay well we can fix that <gasps> Whose idea was it to put the interior back in there? Okay. Well, I don't know if I'm digging this. Something's dumb. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay, note to self, don't break the interior if you can. Let's just see how this is going on. Okay, does everything fit nice and... Okay, we gonna cover anything? All right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. Okay, let's uh, let's go find my screws here. I'm kind of thinking we're gonna need to get a little bit more serious about this. Here we go. Okay, we need a Phillips. Boy, and it's 856. That's all we're going to get done tonight, guys. We're barely going to get these uh, screws in. We're going to have to call it a good day. All right. Well, let's give this a shot see what we come up with here. Okay. There's two of these screws on each side, so we're just going to... I'm just going to put these in. Maybe. Oh, you rat think so again. Hopefully not strip out my threads. That would be, or strip out the head. That would be extra bad. Okay, so here we, look at that. Without that fuel tank in there, we can actually see inside. How nice, cool. Come on, you son of a gun, get in there. Okay, well, let's just, all right. I think I may have to pull those out and re-thread those because they're probably full of paint or something. Or, uh, yeah, you know what I mean. Okay, that one kind of went. Then that thing's not on straight, is it? Oh, oh look at that. It is, whoa, huh. No, that's not on straight. That's not on right. Come on. Get in there. Oof. Looks like I'm stripping out the head. Alright, well, we're going to have to uh, rethink that little bit. Let's rethink that. Okay, it is 8.58, so I'm gonna try and get this screw to go in on the other side. I'm just gonna swap the screws, maybe that'll help. We'll find out soon enough, right? Maybe that will get it. And then we will uh, go uh, start again. And then we'll call it a good night for this lesson and pick it back up next week. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to, I think I'm gonna have to do something a little different on that. That one's, those threads just do not wanna behave. All right, no worries. Well, we always have next week, right? So we can start again. Yeah, them threads are all sorts of weird. Oh, those are self-tapping even. Look at that. Huh. I wonder if this would work here while I still have you. Okay. Okay, now I think we have something that'll work. Let's try that. Keep you off to the side.
Okay. And then the other one. Okay. Come on, bathe. Come on, go. Yeah, I kind of stripped that head out a little bit. I don't think I have another screw that size that would even work for that. But something's, I gotta do something else a little different here. Cause it seems like seems like I don't know what I'm doing here. That's what it seems like. Come on. Go, you dirty dog. So it looks like we're going to have to balance that out to make it in the middle. Let's see, can I run that in? Or am I totally stripped out in there? Ah, figures. And we have Heath Henderson from the great state of Texas. All right, that's looking pretty f f sort of mostly kind of fine. I mean, it's, you know, it's like, yeah, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's all right, it's okay. Oh, and look what else we were supposed to, no wonder that, oh, I'm a dummy, dadgummit. Who's the silly man that decided to do this project? All right, well, I know when to say when. So, guys, um... Before I sweat into a pile of goo here, I'm just going to let you go. It's 9 o'clock. <laughs> this episode's been entertaining. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, it's good. I'm here for your entertainment. Don't forget to tip your waitresses. I'm here all night. Anyways, um, so you learned... Uh, this is the process you guys don't see when I'm working by myself is how many times I screw the frick up. And, uh, God, stupid cap. God, I can't believe I did that. Dumb, dumb, dumb. But this kind of crap is the stuff I do all the time. Just you guys aren't here watching me. Anyways, thank you for watching. Next week, I'm going to put the cab on right. And I'm going to do it before. I'm not going to let you watch. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'll get the fuel tank put in. And then we're going to put in some decals. Because uh, it's time for decals, don't you think? Yeah, I believe so. And then we'll probably take an orange paint pen here. Uh, we're going to put an orange paint pen on these mark these clearance lights right over here. There's some other little details about that I've seen. I uh, like door handle. We can put a little silver paint, chrome paint on that because they're chrome. Um, we'll look at some other details, see what else we can do to make it look cool. So with that, guys, thanks for watching. I actually have uh, I have this scheduled for two more lessons, but hopefully next week we can finish this up because it's this should be about a four-lesson deal. And uh, really, if you've been paying attention, guys, I probably have... Mm, maybe 45 minutes outside of these sessions working on this and that would be painting, stripping paint, prepping for paint, priming paint. So that's about 45 minutes flat on that and then probably 15 minutes, oh yeah, probably an hour outside of, uh, outside of the lessons here, which have been 30 minutes. Um, and we're on lesson three, so that's an hour and a half plus another hour. So in two and a half hours, maybe three, you should probably be able to do this project. And that does not include me shopping for decals and going by and paint either, but uh, that's it. So guys, uh, happy 4th. Uh, Heath, happy 4th to you. Thanks for watching. I uh, hope you're, you celebrate tomorrow well and remember why uh, the celebration is occurring, because uh, I certainly will. And with that, I thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and paying attention. I appreciate it. It is great to have you here. And I will see you next week at 8.30 Central right here at Rockin' H TV. We'll see ya. Bye.